We're going to look at the binomial distribution probability formula as seen here, and we're going to derive this. Now it looks quite complicated, but I'm going to show you a way of thinking about it that makes it seem very intuitive. Suppose I have five dice and I roll them all at once, and I want to know how many twos I'm likely to get. Now you might think, well, there's six numbers, they're all of equal probability. If I had six dice, I might expect to get a two once. In fact, I might expect to get every number once. That would be true on average if you rolled these dice many, many times. Let's suppose we rolled these five dice six times. So essentially we're rolling 30 dice. We might expect to get a two once every six times. So in that case, it would be 30 divided by six. We'd expect to get a two about five times. However, these five times are going to com be completely random. Perhaps we get two lots of twos in the first throw. And then the second time we throw all five dice, we don't get any twos. There's actually a graph that will tell us exactly how many twos we should expect on a given throw. Here's a graph of the binomial distribution. And what this is telling us is that we're most likely, to, when we roll all five of these dice, to either get no twos, so zero twos, or to get one two. There's a relatively high probability that we'll get a two lots of twos, but it's coming vanishingly small that we'll get three twos. You can't even see, there will be a tiny probability, but it's not showing up on this graph, that we'll get four twos, and an even smaller probability that we'll get five twos. Though, of course, that's not impossible, it's just incredibly unlikely. But what are these probabilities? What value do they take? Well, we're going to look at a formula which will allow us to work out the exact probabilities of each of these bars. So if we want to know the exact probability, though we can't see it on this graph, that four of our dice, four out of five will be twos, we can work that out using the formula. So let's suppose that we have five dice and we want to know the probability that when we roll all five of them, that four of them will be twos. How would we go about this? Well, let's first of all start by defining our random variable. Let's call it x. And we'll say x is going to be the number of twos rolled. We want four of them to be two. So let's look at all the different ways that we could get this, um, this outcome. We could have it so that the first dice is a two. And we could also have the second dice being a two. The third, the fourth, and the fifth one could be a five or a six or a one or a two or a three or a four, just anything other than two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use probability notation to denote this as not two. So this means it could be anything, just not a two. So that would be one way in which I get my desired outcome. Four of them are twos. How else could we have this outcome? Well, it could be the first one is a two, the second, the third, the fourth one is not a two, and the fifth one is a two. So again, we've got our four twos. And we can carry on doing this until we've written out all of the combinations. So there we go, there are all our combinations, the different ways in which we could have five dice being rolled with four of them displaying a two. So let's think about what's the probability of just one of these scenarios occurring. So let's look at this first one. We're going to have one over six. That's the probability of that first two. The second two, is also going to be a, have a probability of 1 over 6. Third is going to be 1 over 6. 
the fourth die displaying a 2 is going to be 1 over 6. This last one, so that's a probability of 5 over 6. It could be any of five numbers out of a possible six, any number other than two. How can we just simplify this then? Well, we can see that we've got four one over sixes. So I'm going to put that to the power four. And then we've just got one five over six. So I'll just leave that like that. Let's do the same for all these other possibilities. So as we can see here, it's exactly the same. It's just that this fourth die, that's got a probability of 5 over 6 now because it's the fourth die that displays any number other than 2. And when we simplify this probability, we're also going to get 1 over 6 to the power 4 times 5 over 6. Let's do this for the other three possibilities. So hopefully we can see the pattern that all of our rows are actually, when we simplify it, identical probability-wise. They all have an equal probability of occurring. But when we look at the individual case, it's just this 5 over 6 appears there, or it appears here, and it moves along. But the overall probability is identical. So we're trying to find the probability that x equals 4. So actually, we just need to add up all of those probabilities. So 1 over 6 to the power 4 times 5 over 6. Now, we could do that plus, 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 adding up all of these. Or I could just say, well, hang on, I've got 5 of this lot. So why don't I just times this by 5? And that would be my probability. But you may think, well, hang on, gosh, that sounds like quite a simple problem. And yet, look how much working it took. Is there a way that I could have jumped to this more quickly? And of course there is. So this, let's try to make this more general so that instead of just solving for this problem, we can solve for any problem. For instance, if I had six dice and I wanted to know how, um, the probability that four of them would be ones, for instance. So let's make that a bit smaller. So the first thing we want to ask is where did this 5 come from? Well we can see that it came from the fact that there are 5 possible ways that we were able to get 4 of our dice to be 2s. Now is there a way that we could have known that there were 5 possible ways without having to draw them all out? Well this is where the choose function comes in. So on your calculator, you should see a button. Normally it's written something like n choose r. And this button allows us to work out the number of combinations without ha having to write them all out. So here we could, in our calculator, we could write out, I have five dice and I want to choose four of them such that they will be my desired outcome. And if you put that into your calculator, you should find that you've got five. So your calculator is automatically working out what are all the possibilities in which you can choose four of your dice, four out of five, to be your desired outcome. So now instead of five, we're going to write more generically. And we're going to say, that I have five dice and I want to choose four of them to be my desired outcome. And then I'm going to leave everything constant for now. So I've still got my one over six to the power four and my five over six, and that will be to the power one. And you'll see why that's important in a moment. So let's keep going and make it even more generic. So instead of my probability of x equals 4, I want to make it anything. So it's not just four of my dice have to be a particular number. It could be anything. So I'm going to write a lowercase x. And let me just explain the difference between this capital X and the lowercase x. 
for the capital X or any capital variable, I always tell my students, think of these as this is a sentence. It's not a number. The way we use algebra, we normally use letters to represent numbers. But in this case, the capital letters will represent a sentence. So here, we're going to have the probability. And what is our sentence? Have we defined it? If we look back at the top, we have. We've written our sentence out here. So when you see this, don't think it's some number equals a number. Think of it as your sentence. The probability that my number of twos rolled equals, it was four, but it could be three, it could be two. So my capital X is my sentence and my lowercase x is my number as per usual. So we normally have a lower x to represent a number and in this case, there it is, it's that number there. So the lowercase x is a number, capital X is a sentence. I'm going to take this away now, but just in your head, even though I take it away and I take the words out because it's much easier to write a capital X than that whole sentence, still think of it as the sentence. And now I've got my five choose four. Well, because I'm making this general, I'm not going to confine myself to five dice. I'm going to say I can have any number of dice. I'll give that an N. So it could be eight dice, it could be a hundred or a million e even. And likewise, I don't just want to say I can only choose four of them to be my desired outcome. I'm going to say I'm going to let them be X. So my desired X amount of the dice are going to be my desired outcome. Now what is the one over six? The one over six was my probability of success. So, and success in this example is the chance, the probability that my dice is a two. So I'm going to put instead of one over six, I'm just going to put a P. And I'm going to define this, so I can come over here and write where P equals the probability of success. In this case, it would be rolling a two. So I'm making it very general. I'm going to change my 1 over 6 to P. What was the 4? Well, the 4 was here. And now I've said I'm making that general. So I'm going to have it as X. And then the 5 over 6. Well, if 1 over 6 is my probability of success, the 5 over the 6 is the probability of failure. So looking at our example, the probability of not getting a 2. So probability of failure is going to be 1 minus p. Occasionally you'll see this written as q. And what about this power 1? Well, where did that come about? Well, we know that both of these powers must add up to 5. Looking here, we've got 5 factors that are multiplying each other. So when we simplified them and brought them all together, we know that we've got four of our factors here, and then this must be a one. So they both equal five, because we have one, two, three, four, five. So this is going to be this, well, here it was five minus four, that equals one. But now generally we're going to have n minus x. And there we have it, that's the formula for a binomial distribution. And if you can, when you see this formula, instead of thinking it looks a bit horrific, try to think of this example. So think, here's my probability. This is my sentence, so the number of twos rolled equals four. Well, there's five different ways you can select four, so that's going to be our choose function. Probability of success. Here's all our probability of successes. If four of them are successes, it must be to the power four. So this is going to be to the power x and then probability of failure, and both of these powers must equal n, so this is obviously going to be n minus x. So let's return to our original binomial distribution, this graph here, where originally we wanted to work out what this value was. We couldn't quite see it, so we knew it was a tiny value, but we know the formula that we need to use now to work out what that value is. We're going to have five choose 
five dice and we want four of the outcomes to be a certain number, in this case two, although it could be any number. Our one over six is our probability of success, the probability of getting a two in this case. We want that to the power four because we want four of them, four of the die to be twos. And then we want one of the die to be not a two. So that's a probability of failure, which is five over six. And that will be to the power one, because we want just one die to not be, to be a failure. And we can see how tiny this probability is, which is why it's not showing up on our graph. 0 0.00322.